This video is sponsored by Brookwells Parts and Accessories. They're helping us to help you to stay on the road. Check them out at www.brookwell.co.uk. They can get any part for any Land Rovers. If you can't find it on the website, give them a call and talk to them about your needs. Okay, hello, welcome back to the Yellow TV. Right, confession time. Um, the last video I did on this, uh, doing the mathematics with the pinion height, I got it wrong. Well, actually, I got it right first, and then I got it wrong. I think it must have been because of the time I was doing this. Um, thanks for the guys that pointed this out. Yeah, the shim um, difference was 0 0.095. And I'll just show you here in this clip, I did actually get it right first of all. And for some unknown reason, I actually changed it. I, I really don't know why. Um, this is one thing when you're doing calculations if you were going to the moon you'd have missed it by a mile if you'd have got it wrong um set an opinion head obviously you would have checked it again and it would have been wrong and you'd have to recalculate so i actually uh for some reason then wrote out 0 0.950 of a mil big difference which would have given me a shim which was bigger than i needed or two shims at least or even three Okay, so you got that, check your maths, make sure that you check mine as well. Right, so the uh, the other part of this is setting the preload on the bearings, okay. Preload is different to end float. You can have zero end float and put a little bit of preload on it, which is a pressure on the bearings, which causes drag. So the nut uh, flange, when it's clamped down, clamps the bearings tight. Okay, and you need a shim, two shims, you need a, a selective shims, as they call them, um, fitted here to put the space correct between the two bearings so they're not too tight and they're not too loose. Now, this isn't uh, mathematical rocket science, this is hit or miss and a trial and error. So when the pinion flange is tightened to 130 newton meters, you should be able to rotate the pinion shaft at three newton meters using new bearings or 1.5 newton meters, that's force um, with old bearings. That's basically um, turning it so it just feels like it's binding a little bit. Okay, so like I say, this is a trial and error. The only measurement you will do is working out what shim you have and what shim you may want to fit in. So it's a matter of um, putting it together with the bearings, um, the shim, then bearing, then the flange, and then nipping it up, okay? What I would advise is to make sure you have the workshop manual for the diff for the vehicle that you have. Now this one I have here is a bit of an oddity. I think this uh, is a bit, but I'm treating it as a D1 diff. Now this feels tight straight away, that's not right, that's binding up too much and I can really only just turn it. So again, like I'm saying, the force to rotate the pinion shaft is three newton meters and to be honest with you, you're not going to find an instrument uh, unless you're an engineer that is going to uh, register that. Um, so what it basically says in the manual is uh, if it's tight put thicker shims in if it's loose you put thinner shims in and it's okay when you're in a workshop and you have a, a whole bucket load of shims you can just keep trying it until you get the right preload figure okay that's hard to do and i'm sorry there's no other way around it okay so it should be smooth to move okay just a light bit of drag okay you push it around your finger and it feels good there's no short cutting here at all you have to clamp the nut up right so i've got a gauge here this uh, registers at something like um, uh, this is kilogram force uh, Land Rover recommends something like this and to buy one of these are quite expensive I wouldn't expect you to have one in your toolbox according to Google 3 newton meters is 0 0.3 05915 uh, kilogram force per meter luckily this gauge is in kilogram centimeters force and uh, the <laughs> googling it again the kilogram centimeter force to newton meters is this so if we look at this five kilogram force centimeters 
is equal to half a newton meters so i can go up to at least 15 kilogram force centimeters which will be on uh, bedded in bearings or 30 kilogram force on new bearings i can appreciate some of you guys are going oh god this is a little bit too complex but get your head around it and become a little bit of a measurement anorak because we land driver owners we shine a little bit above all the other diys okay this thing here some of you know it you've done your timing belts with it no good okay so uh if you put your shims in and you've got this sort of play it's absolutely no good and the shim is um, too thick okay because it's allowed too much space between the two bearings as you can see um now this one is from the kit where i've shown you before taking the uh, spacer out and not done the nut up too tight i've got the uh, the right feeling but because the nut's not done up the flange is not clamping the bearing properly this is what you need to be aware of it has to be tight okay otherwise you are going to run into uh, big issues right so i'm gonna keep trying at this and to be honest with you i'm in the same boat as you i just have to keep trying um what i did the one that was extremely loose i put three shims in um no good okay so i'll put two in and then try it from there what i do have a discrepancy with is the shim that i've measured that i've got out of these diffs and the ones that land rover recommend and you'll see that in a minute there's there's a slight discrepancy however you can order the shims and i uh, expect you to order a few of them not just one uh, I'm afraid there's no other way around this at all. Okay, unless there's somebody uh, uh, who's watching this that knows a way around it, it is um, a hit and miss affair until you get it right. Okay, so it's trial and error. As you can see here, I'm holding the flange and then talking it up to the uh, recommended torque, which from the manual for this uh, diff is 130 newton meters. Okay, okay, so I'll just click that off. So what uh, Land Rover recommend, if you're not using the original shims with your diff, then you use a thicker shim to start with, which is a 2.155 millimetres. And this is where the discrepancy with the shims that I've got here comes into play, because when I wind this up, this comes up to something like 2.315 millimetres. Now, don't trust my measurements. You can see that I'm... Uh, I'm not confident in my measurement all of a sudden and my mathematics, but I did get Eugene to uh, double check them and uh, we are actually agreeing on the size. So um, never mind, what you have is a big list here of pinion preload shims, which you can get from Brookwells. You have the part numbers here and I'm afraid I will have to leave you with working it out for yourself because I can't do it. It's a very much very individual for each diff and uh, once you've set it right you're okay you're home and dry and if you've got extra shims all the better because you will become an expert once you've done this it's grueling but it's worth it so anyway um what you're feeling for as i've said before um i've got the old diff without the crown wheel in there and this one i've just set okay that's nice and smooth a little bit of drag which is your preload i would trust your feelings uh, human beings have evolved uh, to sense things quite sensitively so um, go ahead and see how you get on you'll have noticed that there is no diff pinion seal and you do not want to fit it while you're trying to uh, get your preload right on your bearings because you're going to have to get this uh, take this on and off quite a few times what i recommend is not what the manual says and fit the the pinion seal until the crown wheel has been fitted and the backlash has uh, been uh, set correctly and we've uh, checked the teeth impression this is quite important because if it's not meshing properly then we might have to alter the pinion uh, height slightly but hopefully if you've done it right it should be okay but until then don't fit the pinion seal okay so now we've got to get on with assembling the crown wheel this was marked earlier and i've got 391 and the pinion number is 391 as well so it's a matching pair uh, just make sure that you do have the matching pair now i did mark this um to fit with the housing however we've changed the housing so uh, yeah what we'll have to do is uh, set it and then go ahead and uh, see how it is with run out on once it's assembled now i'm cleaning the bolt holes you also clean the bolts so they're dry 
And um, this is a hammer. I don't have a soft hammer, so I'm going to be using the softest part of the hammer to tap this into place. This is a second-hand better um, diff housing, which I'm going to be uh, using with this diff. Okay, You could as well be putting a limited slip diff in. doesn't matter. Okay, so never hit metal with metal when you're trying to force it through like this. Now, it is a very, very tight fit, so you want the bolt holes to line up. You do get a second chance, however, if, uh, if they don't. But you can see the gap where it is between the housing and the crown wheel. You do not want that there afterwards. And look, my hammer handle is now splitting. I should have had a soft hammer. That's at work, so that's rather unfortunate. So anyway, uh, the bolts are dry and there's no thread lock on here at the moment. What we're going to do is put it together first and trial it. Okay, so I'm just jumping to the last two bolts which aren't actually uh, screwing in. And there is a reason for this, because this is not lined up correctly. So after a while, um, I just tapped it around just very, very gently, like that, OK? And it's moved it, so I've got all the bolts free to screw in. So um, tightening sequence, well, basically, you do opposites like you were doing up a, a truck wheel or something like that. So you're getting the cor correct clamping force and you'll find it will come together properly, okay? Now, um, the torque setting here is 58 newton meters for these bolts. Make sure you adhere to that, don't over tighten them. Okay, so um, you can see how I've had this rested in here. Okay, there is a special tool you can make up, which is a stand to hold this while you do your crown wheel um, bolts. However, we don't have that luxury. And unless you've got the time to weld one up, you can see it in the manual. Um, basically, I'd just do this. Okay, so I'm going to torque these up to uh, 58 newton meters in diagonals first. Okay, and each one of these will click off. And then basically, what I'll do once I've done the diagonals, I will go round in a circle to make sure that they've all been done. Because sometimes you can do a diagonal and actually miss one. So the next thing is fitting the bearings. And we have an old bearing race, which we removed. We don't want to fit it that way. We want to fit it this way. OK, we do not want to damage the bearing race. Otherwise, this could cause overheating. So basically, back in the press and press it into place. OK, there's, there's a no-brainer here, basically. Um, yeah, so the bearings go on one either way. And you usually... Uh, want to do this just before you're assembling it. Okay, you can see how I've fitted this up. I've also used a brake drum. Okay, now this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to show you that this end, you don't really want to put any pressure on it. You want something with a hole in it, like you can see on this side. Okay, so the crown wheel is actually facing upwards on the teeth, and then we'll press it into place. And it doesn't take that much force. Thanks for Neil Enzer for this little tip. It's actually brilliant. No use for a socket there. We can just use the old bearing. And then release it and turn it over. Now, what we have an issue here, of course, uh, unless you've got something that fits exactly, we don't want to damage any of the parts there by pushing it into the brake drum. So we'll use some wood. Yeah, nice and soft. And then we'll go ahead and uh, fit the bearing the right way around. Bearings only go on one way, and it's pretty obvious, and I'm pretty sure that there has been somebody who has fitted it bearings the wrong way and then uh, struggled to take them off. Um, however, we'll do this, stack them up, and then away we go. Push them into place, okay? So push them until they stop, all right? Checking that the bearing race is not damaged. If the bearing race, uh, not the bearing race, sorry, if the bearing carrier is damaged then you'll have to put another set of bearings in because you do not want it distorted in any way. So to keep the races together you want to do something like this. Um, make sure that you don't get dust and grit on them and then we'll be ready to assemble this into the housing. Okay I've got a fair bit to do. I'm going to put all of these together and uh, basically the uh, tutorials condensed. Apologies for um, the video late this time round. It's basically I've got this 
piece of Euro box which needs a lot of work to it for an MOT, including broken springs and the such like. This is uh, a bit of a pain in the backside. I've got to get this on the road pretty shortly. And, uh, yeah, it's got an ABS fault. And uh, just out of curiosity, for people who are interested, the uh, French cars, they like to stick their electrics where you can't get out of them properly unless you take the uh, bumper off. Now, ABS, this one, yeah, what happened here, and I noticed this, it was actually working when it was wet and it was faulty when it was dry, and I'm sure that there was a connection, electrical connection problem. The DTC, when I scanned it, it said that it, um, the pump was seized, or this high resistance, which was being read in the ECU, um, on the positive usually. Now, I uh, just have a look here and I pinned out all of these that were relevant, which you've got two powers and two earths. So basically I pinned it out from the back and uh, what I found was a bad earth. Uh, French cars seem to have a green and yellow tracer for earth and you can see the bad earth there. Once that's cleaned up, it's all right. And I just checked all these relays to make sure they're all right. I've no idea what they for, were for, but a lot of power so yeah i'm actually quite busy i'm still knocking out the tutorials and i've got a lot of work to do for other people um french car again the terminals they always seem to corrode for some reason don't know why